Hi Money Makers! Today we are going to talk about prenups and the question that we have today is from Janice in Vancouver, BC. She's one of my regular readers and she has given me permission to share her question. So here we go. I was widowed in my early 40s and I have two grown children now. I'm turning 67 this year. My new partner has kids too and we plan to get married again next year. Hopefully third time's the charm. Fantastic Janice. Should I consider a prenup? Well, this is a great question. First of all, congratulations Janice on getting married again and good for you, very, very smart for you to consider getting a prenup. You know, this is something that a lot of people can relate to. And this is a question, it doesn't matter how old you are, what age you're at. The thought, sometimes, you know, the thought of combining your assets only to have to untangle them later due to a messy split kind of scares the heck out of you. I mean, if you're not in your 20s, just getting married with nothing but love and school debt, then, you know, you're a little bit older and you typically have assets. And maybe you've even been burned in the past. A prenuptial agreement or cohabitation agreement is always, always recommended for starting over couples or even new couples that bring substantial assets to the marriage. Agreements are designed to favor both parties, bringing more clarity to your union. And I, I don't want you to discount the advantages of a prenup. Instead, I would like you to think of it as a framework that is best for your future together. So let's talk about how they really work in Canada. Marriage contracts are typically entered into prior to the marriage, hence the reason they're called prenuptials, right? However, they can also be signed or amended at any time during the marriage. They are extremely beneficial for comprehensive estate planning, which includes death succession. So you want it to include what will happen should you predecease your partner, especially if you have dependents that need to be cared for, like children or someone or even an elder. So you want it to have the death succession piece in it, not, I mean, of course, the prenup is designed to state how things will be separated if you have a future divorce or separation. And what you also want to do is you will be doing a new will as well. So you want to make sure that your new will that you do together is actually in sync with your prenuptial agreement. You see, marriage contracts can, and they often do, override wills. So let me give you an example. Let's say you decide you want to gift more to your surviving spouse. I mean, things have changed. You've been married a long time and you want to do up a new will and you're going to gift more to your or leave more to your surviving spouse than you originally set up with your marriage contract that you might have done years and years ago. Not possible. You can't do that unless the contract states that you could do so or you need to have a new marriage contract. It is also prudent to get a certificate of ILA. And you're going to say, what is an ILA? It's an independent legal advice. And the reason why you want ILA is so that the marriage contract itself is less vulnerable to be challenged or to even be set aside by the courts in the future if you pass away and if it's contested by family members. So 
remember, it's not a lack of love or future commitment to your new partner, but rather your conscious need to set out the manner in which your finances and your property will be shared or divided in the event of death or divorce based on your wishes and intentions and not on provincial statutory laws. That was a great question, Janice. Thank you for sending it to me. And thank you for joining me today. Remember that if you have a finance question as well and you'd like me to answer it, then send me an email to info at askthemoneylady.ca. See you next time.